It's great to be back in Manly. I've, uh, I've had a lot of waves here at this beach. And I speak to you today. Uh, is that okay for you guys? You're getting a big echo. Yeah, that's all right. Thumbs up. Well, actually, you might get you to talk to me anyway. I had a, I had a question for you. Who is the most cold-blooded, efficient predator on this planet? You and me. And I say that because I want to get a little perspective in this debate. Millions of sharks are killed each year around the planet for their fins, for their food, as bycatch. And every time we have a loss of human life, we turn these creatures into monsters. Now, every loss of human life is a tragedy. Uh, I, as a surfer, and both my kids surf, I probably thought as much about sharks as anyone else on this beach. Or should I say, you know, I try not to think about them too much. But where I am in Tassie, I often surf alone or with a few people, and they're never far from my mind. But I was criticised recently when I did an interview for the monthly magazine, and the journalist said to me, Senator, do you think if the drum lines that you oppose and the shark nets that you oppose if they were to be proven to save human life, would you still oppose them? And that's a very big if. That's a very big if, because there is no evidence. There is no evidence around this country, since these mitigation measures were put in place, that they actually do save human life. And I said I would still oppose them. My reason, and maybe it's a it's a little bit of perspective that comes with mature age, is simple moral prerogative. We have crowded out, we have polluted, and we have hunted so many species on this planet to extinction. And we are still doing it. Biodiversity, the threats to our ecosystems, every day they grow worse. So at some point, where do you draw the line and say, we don't need to do this anymore. We are smarter than this. We have ways of managing our environment. We have ways of educating people so that we don't need to do what we did in the 1950s. Just because we did it then doesn't mean we need to do it today. This planet is at a tipping point and sharks, white sharks especially now, uh, as uh, whales, have become symbolic. They have become a symbol of us taking action to turn the tide in this planet. Now there's two things I wanted to add today because there's been some fantastic speakers. The first is the role of the media. The role of the media in the issue we face with the death of sharks. If the public fear sharks, if they fear sharks, they will end up hating sharks, and at the very least, they won't care what happens to sharks. And my, one of my biggest gripes is the way sharks, shark attacks, near shark attacks are reported in the media. It's like they become the terrorists of the sea. Well, this is where they live. And if you don't like it, sorry to be harsh, don't go in the bloody ocean if you don't like it. I don't want to become fish food myself, nor do I want my kids to be attacked by a shark. But that is the reality that I live with. That is the decision that I've made. And I think unless all of you, through social media, every time a journalist tweets a story that calls a shark a monster, or talks about them hunting on our shores, or vicious, nasty attacks, words are weapons. And unfortunately, they are being used against sharks in this country. So it's very important that every time you see a tweet or a post on social media or an article in the press that you write in and you contact the journalists. And I'd say this to the NGOs here today who are doing a fantastic job. Arrange to meet with the media. Go to the media council, go to these organisations and sit down and ask them 
Why do they use such language? Is it to sell newspapers? Is it to get headlines and grab eyeballs? Probably yes. Maybe some of them mean what they say, but it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous because I, as a decision maker in Parliament, need your support. And most politicians are weak. Most of them are weak and they won't stand up on issues on the environment. And if they know that most Australians want to see sharks killed, or they don't care if there's this indiscriminate slaughter of sharks off our coastlines, then nothing will get done. So we absolutely need to turn that tide. Another thing that I would really like your help on, I'd really like you to go away and think about it, and there's so much you can do, is right now, nationally, we are pushing for better seafood labelling laws. If you, as a consumer of a product, have the information, you can drive outcomes in this country that will help save sharks. If you have the information to tell you the species of fish that you're eating, how it was caught, where it was caught, you can say, well, you know what? I'm not going to eat this because it's an unsustainable practice. At the moment, no offence to the good, hard-working businesses behind us. Actually, there is a really good cafe around here that labels, puts a lot of information, and I've been around and had a check, puts a lot of information on their menu that tells you all about the species of the fish. If you're going to eat fish, go and support this guy. Go and support him. Show him that you, as an example, tweet. Go stand in front of his, his menu with him and tweet it and send it to all your friends. You can actually drive outcomes on the ocean without worrying about big business or without worrying about weak politicians. But what we do need for that is information. Now, voluntary systems haven't worked. So we are pushing really hard to get a system in place. And the Senate committee that I'm on has just recommended a, at least a step in the right direction that we label imported food versus locally caught, but we need to go further. But that is something that you can drive as conservationists and as consumers of seafood. You can drive that. And it's a really good place to start by going and showing your support, talking to your local fish retailers and letting them know, letting them know that you won't buy their product unless they can actually tell you exactly what it is that you're eating.